And then it was all over. The storm seemed to lose its frenzy. The ragged clouds gave way to the stars above. Max Payne is a game that should not have been successful. It just shouldn't have worked. It's a title that was marketed as an action game, but presented itself as a psychological thriller, being made by a relatively unknown Finnish game studio. It took cheesy, hard-boiled, detective, pulp noir fiction and overlapped it with Hong Kong action flicks and peppered on some Norse mythology. And instead of a disgusting concoction of porcelain pruno, it became a fine-aged port that almost goes down better now than it did 19 years ago. Everything that could have ended in disaster instead led to Max Payne's success. I guess when you're shooting for the stars, whether you hit or miss, at least you end up a bit closer to heaven. Remedy Entertainment was an obscure developer from Finland with exactly one title to their name, a combat racer called Death Rally. The game didn't flop, and that was enough for the publisher 3D Realms to give them the green light for a second game. But winning the favor of the publisher didn't exactly get them a top-notch budget to produce a masterpiece. Upon deciding on an action shooter game, due to the success of 3D Realms Duke Nukem 3D in 1996, they got to work on Max Payne. And thankfully so, as concept titles for the game were ideas like Max Heat and Dick Justice. So with a little money in the pocket and inspirational games like Duke Nukem and Tomb Raider controlling the action market of 96, they got to work. Remedy decided to take the shooter elements of Duke Nukem and the third person camera controls from Tomb Raider and make a third person shooter. Something done only a handful of times by 1996. Games like Virtuoso from 94 and Fade to Black in 95 are some of the only titles to pull off 3D graphics as a third person shooter. Remedy wanted to be different. This desire to stand out is ultimately what contributed to the success of Max Payne. They could have made another first person shooter following Duke Nukem's footsteps or even a male version of Laura Croft in an Indiana Jones type game, but they didn't. They wanted to take what's working and make something that was theirs, so a third person shooter it was. This was a bold choice from the start by Remedy, and a slew of production problems mostly hitched on budget constraints led to one financial loophole after another to get this game on the shelf. The small team developed the game engine from the ground up. This was a mix of saving costs and a way for Remedy to flex their muscles a little bit. You see, before they started making games, they made benchmark software for PCs to test the capabilities of different hardware, so making a game engine was really no problem for them. And this way they can add in some serious state-of-the-art stuff, like advanced particle effects with muzzle flashes and smoking gun barrels and dynamic lighting, while at the same time not licensing any other company's engine. However, in order to cut costs, in-engine cutscenes in the game were pronounced unachievable, and a cheaper alternative of using graphic novel style presentation with voiceovers was employed. But not even hand-drawn comic strips, just photographs of the actors layered with a few stylized filters to tell the story. Even though they were skilled developers, they still were a small team, and making everything from scratch is not known to save time. And as time went on, the game needed constant revamping to keep up with the games being released. This led to a five year development for Max Payne. Not something a publisher wants to hear, but the product being made was tremendous and no one was going to stop the train. Perhaps the biggest cost cutting measure of the team was not hiring actors to be the models and the voices of the characters. The dev team used everyone at their disposal to become the face of a character. Sam Lake, the writer of the game, became the iconic, constipated grimace of the titular man himself. Lake's mother ended up being the main antagonist. They used everyone available, family, friends, even the guy who came around to fill the coke machine was roped into becoming the face of a mobster, according to Sam Lake in a 2011 GameSpot interview. Luckily for Remedy, they had the foresight to hire professional voice acting for Max Payne himself. James McCaffrey was cast, because the dreary dialogue of Max Payne needed to be executed perfectly in order to make this amalgamation of plot themes work in any capacity, leading us to another bold choice by by Remedy, a story focused shooter. There will be spoilers ahead. Max Payne, a detective for the NYPD, returns home to find his wife and baby daughter dead. Two junkies out of their mind on a new drug called Valkyr made their way into Max's home and slaughtered his family. This drives Max Payne to transfer to the DEA to try to find the source of the drug and go into an undercover operation with the Puccinello crime family. Getting close to making a break in the case after two and a half years, his handler, Detective Balder, is suddenly killed and Max is framed for his murder, leaving him wanted by both the cops 
and the Mafia. Max follows a trail of evidence entering into alliances with Russian gangster Vladimir Lem and contract killer Mona Sachs to get information that he needs. Eventually Payne discovers the source of the drug, the Acer Corporation, and its head honcho, Nicole Horn. Congressman Alfred Woden, someone who is being blackmailed by Horn, helps Payne get into Horn's building where he confronts her and kills her in a pretty spectacular fashion. In return for taking out Horn, Woden pulls some strings and frees Max from criminal punishment, clearing him of the murder of Balder and making Max a free man. The plot is just fantastic, but the creative approach by Sam Lake is what made it pop. It's presented in a detective noir fashion by a hard-boiled cop who can't stop popping painkillers. Lake takes inspiration from the classics like Humphrey Bogart in The Maltese Falcon or Robert Mitchum in Out of the Past, shaping pain on these hard-boiled detectives, shaping the world around the grimy streets of New York City in the mid-90s. The dialogue comes off as cheesy because these movie influences are from the 40s and 50s, but it's written so poetically poetically well and performed exceptionally by McCaffrey that you just can't help but love it. Taking these themes and tossing in heavy references to Norse mythology leaves quite the unique taste in the mouth. Max's handler that gets killed is Detective Balder, Balder being the name of the god whose death precedes Ragnarok. And speaking of Ragnarok, that's a nightclub a large part of the game takes place in. The drug named Valkyr is a play on the Valkyries and the production of the drug is deemed Project Valhalla. The Valkyries sweep those who died in battle off the battlefield and carry them to the halls of the dead. And this drug is produced by the Aesir Corporation, the Aesir being the principal pantheon of Norse mythology, one of the gods in that pantheon being Odin, the one-eyed god of wisdom. The mastermind behind this whole game is one-eyed Alfred Woden, Woden just being the pagan name for Odin. Odin. Having a great story is a great addition to any game, but Max Payne is driven by the story. This isn't just a shooter with a nice plot, it's a methodical deconstruction of a character. A dissection of emotion and turmoil afflicted onto Max, and a rise to vengeance through nothing but a taste for blood and painkillers. This game starts with a punch to the stomach. You walk into the house during the final moments of your family's lives. Your baby is crying, your wife is screaming out for you, and as you run up the stairs to save them, you see your dead baby be bloody in their crib. You see your wife slain on the bed, all before killing the person responsible. You are put in the traumatic footsteps of Max Payne. This scene is the cornerstone of the game. Your wife's screams and your baby's tears are torture devices. They haunt Max for the entire game. He becomes fully traumatized by them. You play out Max's nightmares and his drug-induced terrors where he is perpetually navigating the scene, sometimes losing the house entirely and just following a trail of blood, all by being tortured by the cries of his family, even going further to find himself to blame for their deaths and envisioning himself as the killer, doing mental gymnastics to find any fault in his actions, making himself guilty. Max Payne may just be one of the most traumatized characters in gaming history. I think he's one of the most fleshed out protagonists of any shooter for sure. After his family's death though, Max comes off as numb to most things, even wielding a pitch black sense of humor in his surroundings. Sam Lake also incorporates it's a bit of meta into this disgustingly bleak story. Late in the game, Max is injected with Valkyrie and left for dead. During his drug-induced nightmare, he realizes that he is in a computer game. There was something disturbingly familiar about the letter before me. The handwriting was all pretty curves. You're in a computer game, Max. The truth was a burning green crack through my brain, weapon statistics hanging in the air glimpsed out of the corner of my eye, endless repetition of the act of shooting, time slowing down to show off my moves, the paranoid feel of someone controlling my every step. I was in a computer game. Funny as hell, it was the most horrible thing I could think of. The narrative is what drove this game forward, but come on, the action is why we all remember Max Payne. It's not like other games where there are explosions and amazing gunfights and such tight choreography each shootout feels close to a high stage ballet when executed properly. I mean, 
what am I saying? It's exactly like that. Just executed so much better because the love for the action was present the whole time. In the same way that Lake was inspired to make the story from multiple different elements, one of the lead developers, a guy with a Finnish name I would not even try to pronounce, was a huge fan of Hong Kong action flicks, especially John Woo stuff like Hard Boiled, and he wanted to implement a slow-mo camera pan on the enemies as they died, just like in the movies. This eventually advanced as the development went on, and the team wanted Max to be able to control the slowdown mode and jump around creating these stylized shootouts in a cinematic fashion. Me, open up, let me in quick. Not so fast. The password, John Wu. Come on, okay, John Wu. All right, come right in. It's a trap, it's pain! <laughs> This was the birth of bullet time, the mechanic that paved the way. Time could be slowed at the player's will, sending slow-mo bullets through the air all while aiming in real time with pinpoint accuracy. This paired with Remedy's high-spec game engine with unreal particle effects led to some of the most cinematic shootouts of gaming at the time and for years after. With set pieces ranging from Norse-themed nightclubs to multi-level parking decks to futuristic skyscrapers to mafia-run hotels and slums using a wide variety of guns from dual Berettas to MAC-10s to Colt Commandos and everything in between. Max Payne seems like the unstoppable mega cop to end all crime in NYC. You have to remember though, Max is a walking textbook definition of PTSD. He plays like an army of one sometimes, but this is not a game where you explore your video game power fantasy. Max is still a man a relatively fragile one, and the game is balanced in such a way that bullet time is not just a fun mechanic, but it's damn near necessary to get through some of the fights. Max's only healing through the game is sparsely placed painkillers that he can find scattered about New York. Even finishing a chapter and moving on to the next one leaves you just as injured as you were in the last one. No painkillers, no health. This doesn't seem that bad until you realize a single shot can kill you, a well-placed one at least, but even more minor shots take a massive portion of your health. It's almost as if Max is represented as a holy human being by all aspects of the game. That being said, the action is the only thing not seen as risky during the development of the game. After all, it was advertised as an action game and damn did it deliver. A wrench was thrown in the mix during development though. A little movie called The Matrix was released and had a particular gimmick it used that gained massive popularity across the globe. Back up! Stand back up! This was a potential problem for Remedy. Max Payne was well in development by 1999 when The Matrix was released and bullet time was an established mechanic in the game. But since Max Payne wouldn't release until after The Matrix, it left them exposed to being accused of just copying the mechanic from the movie. It would be great marketing for the game, the mechanic would be easy to sell due to the popularity. Oh yeah, you can just slow bullets down like in The Matrix. But at the same time, the game risked looking like a ripoff. Luckily, that wasn't the case. I'm sure both developer and publisher were a little stressed over it though. Everything was subjective. There were only personal apocalypses. Nothing is a cliche when it's happening to you. Max Payne wore so many hats, but did them all exceptionally well. It was an action game, a psychological thriller, a super stylized game with advanced engine capabilities, all while having insane level design and brilliant writing, both the darkness and the humor. It is simply insane that this game was successful, let alone produced. So many things could have gone wrong but everything fell perfectly. The cost-cutting measures like the comic panels and engine development ended up working immensely in their favor. I mean, have you seen cutscenes from that time period? Ah, Mirai, my favorite lady. You looking for some fun? A little food for Spain? Hey, Chico. Nah, just the usual. Here you go, lady. Age like milk. The idea of a third person shooter was a risk, that genre was hardly explored at the time, and making them story focused was even more risk piled on top. Both of those things not only excelled, but inspired games for years to come. The Matrix being released mid-production wasn't necessarily a risk by Remedy, but another thing that could have tainted the game. We could potentially all know Max Payne as the game that just copied The Matrix. On top of all that, the year of release, 2001, it competed against insane titles like Halo, 
Kombat Evolved, Devil May Cry, and Grand Theft Auto 3, just to name a few. And it still became a legend, selling millions of copies making fans, critics, and other game developers know who Remedy was. The Max Payne console ports were handled by Rockstar Games, a company known for its immense presence today. But this was before the release of Grand Theft Auto 3, and Rockstar was actually hurting for cash. And since neither Remedy nor 3D Realms had any experience with consoles, it was a perfect side job for Rockstar. However, the same year, they did eventually release Grand Theft Auto 3, which was an immediate hit, flooding the studio with cash. One of the first things Rockstar did with this cash flow was obtain the Max Payne IP from Remedy for $10 million. This large check, along with the phenomenal sales of Max Payne, left this formerly unknown Finnish studio with very heavy pockets. Remedy was already working on a sequel for the game, which turned out to be convenient when Rockstar came knocking, asking them to develop the second game while they were busy expanding the Grand Theft Auto universe with Vice City and San Andreas. There were a couple problems with this though. 1. Rockstar wanted the game done in 18 months, which is laughable when you look at the 5 years it took to make the first title. And 2. Where does the story go from here? Max fulfilled his mission. He was living only to avenge his dead wife and child, and he did. He murdered all those responsible. Everyone was dead. There was nothing left to say. Perhaps this was the final mistake of Max Payne. The story wasn't written to allow for a sequel. It was a one and done tale. However, with Sam Lake's brilliance, he found a story, and it fit in with the unique risks that Remedy likes to take. What could be more unconventional than an action game disguised as a psychological thriller? How about an action game disguised as a love story? Just a minute. Talk to me. What are you so afraid of? What do you want from me? The things that I want by Max Payne. The smoke, a whiskey, for the sun to shine. I want to sleep to forget, to change the past, my wife and baby girl back, unlimited ammo and license to kill. Right then, more than anything, I wanted her. You let them here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next time. Peace.